Okay, so our next, next talk is by Carla Bonifaci. Um, she's going to tell us about coherent neutrino nucleus scattering. Okay, ah, it's different. Okay, <laughs> so neutron current uh, interactions. Oh, this happened over here. So neutron uh, current interaction will happen uh, for neutrinos, and if the energy is very low, we will have an enhancement of the cross section because they will uh, uh, have a um, coherent elastic interaction. And uh, these uh, cross sections will grow up uh, as a square of the neutron numbers in the in the nucleus. So this is uh, just the cross section. Stefan showed that, so I will go fast as the energy of the of the neutrino. And we can compare this coherent uh, uh, scattering with uh, other cross sections like the interaction that we can see in Kamiokande, just to understand a little the the enhancement that we have. But the problem that we have is that the uh, recoil of the of the nucleus is very low energy, and it goes as a square of the energy of the neutrino, but it's uh, uh, divided by the, the the mass of the atom. So if uh, we um, we want to see the uh, coherent uh, the recoil of the of the of the atom, we will have very low threshold signal. And this is a problem because mostly of the detectors have a, a threshold limit that goes at uh, some key EV, the, the best one. But in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, we got a lot of improvement because of the search of the dark matter. And because of that, we now we have detectors that are very compatible uh, to low threshold. And that's why uh, uh, the detection was possible. So yesterday we learned that this coherent scatter was detected by the coherent collaboration two years ago. So why to, to study this coherent scatter is important because we can answer, we can understand a lot of uh, things about neutrino physics. Uh, here I summarize some of them. So uh, as we know, uh, MEV neutrino uh, are important for the supernova uh, energy transport, and this is something that knowing how this interaction occurs, we will be able to get better models and to understand what is happening in the, in the, in the supernova. Also, as uh, was already said, the, the for all the dark matter experiment, neutrino will be a background that we cannot avoid at all. So we need to understand this uh, interaction and to to know how, how it is and to characterize it because it will be very important for the dark matter search. Also, very low energy. Uh, we know that the non-standard uh, uh, interaction will uh, have a, a, an enhancement of, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, interaction. So it's a way to find for beyond standard model physics. And also, if this uh, we, we measure the, that this coherence scatter, we can use or, or perform a, a short baseline neutrino oscillation for studying the sterile neutrino. And as it was already discussed, it's a potential. This interaction also is a potential for some uh, detectors to monitor the reactor activity. So there's two ways to produce a, a high flux of a neutrino at low energy. And uh, also uh, one is, uh, as it was done by the coherent uh, collaboration, that is to use a, a neutrino from stopped pion to produce a mu nu, anti mu nu, and uh, electron uh, neutrino, and also uh, to use the reactor nuclear. So I will focus first very fast on that, and then I will go to the nuclear reactor that is where CON is placed. So the idea is just we will have a 1 GV proton that will interact with a, um, a how do you say, uh, with a, 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 a atom. Uh, this is a mercury, I think, yeah. And then we will have the pions, and this pion will decay to the muons, and with the decay we will have the neutrino mu. 
And then these uh, neutrino uh, ions will decay and we will have the other two uh, flavors of the neutrino. So with that, we will have some uh, prompt signal that we will have a, a huge uh, muon production and then a second peak that is the uh, uh, anti-muon and uh, electron muon, uh, anti-muon neutrino and electron neutrino. So this is a spallation source and this is very good because we have timing and with the timing we will have a good uh, uh, background rejection. So the first observation was done with uh, a sodium dope uh, uh, cesium ionide uh, crystal. This is very well known technology and this detector was developed at the University of Chicago. Uh, the uh, material, heavy material, so this is good for the detection. And also these detectors have a very good um, photon production uh, yield. So this is uh, good for, for the, the detection. So what they observed was with uh, the, the expulsion source, what it does, uh, you have a bunch of, of, of signal, and then you can synchronize this with your detection. So you can compare the, the, the signal in your detection when the you don't have been and when you have been. So this is how they discovered that. And here we have the number of uh, photoelectron, the counts in the detector as a number, uh, the, the, the counts uh, as a number of the photoelectrons. And then here we have the, the, the evolution, uh, uh, the relation with the time arrival because we know uh, when the, the beam pass uh, through the detector. The neutrino. So with that, we can observe an excess, and this excess was uh, almost a seven sigma level. So this was the discovery of the, the first measure of the, of the neutrino cohere interaction that was predicted 40 years ago. Uh, the other way is just to use the, the neutrino from nuclear reactor, and this will explore an, uh, another uh, flavor that is the anti-neutrino uh, uh, of the electron. And this is what Kony uh, tried to do. So Kony experiment decided to use the uh, high resolution CCDs, that is the silicon detector, uh, to, to, to measure the, the nuclear recoil produced in the bulk of the CCD. So the Kony have two, two levels. First was the, the proof of the concept that was using a small CCD of one gram, and this was in 2015. And this CCD is the same CCD that it was used to, to build the uh, uh, Kennedy telescope. It was one of the CCDs that was, has not uh, as much good quality to put in the detector, of course. And uh, then once we, we saw that the, the measure is possible, we did an upgrade. Uh, we installed 14 CCDs of uh, 6 gram each, uh, having a significant increase of the mass for the detection. So I will explain a little how the CCDs work. So this is uh, the idea of the CCD. CCD is a pixelization of a silico uh, detector. Uh, with this high energy, uh, high quality CCDs, we are able to have a very low uh, noise. Uh, this is around two electrons. Um, and the idea is that uh, when the, the neutrino interacts, we will have the recoil. This recoil will generate uh, ionization, and since we have a, a differential of potential here, we will be able to move the charge and collect and accumulate the charge in the in the surface of the CCD, where we have this pixelization. It's 15 by 15 microns pixelization. And uh, what is nice is that the CCD is sensitive to the, the place inside the bulk where the interaction occurs, because we have some diffusion of the. So if the, the interaction occurs very near to the, the top of the CCD where we have the gate, we will see a, a small signal, a few pixels uh, trigger, one or two. Uh, but if it occurs on the other side, we since we will have this diffusion, diffusion we will see a lot of uh, a, 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 barter, a, a wider uh, signal. And doing that, we were able not only to have the spatial resolution in the top of the, of the area of the CCD, but also the depth where the, uh, the heat was uh, happening. And this is very nice because we can put some fiducial cast just to avoid the, the, the external part and also to have a background reduction. So we use part of the CCD, the last uh, background reduction uh, uh, ana uh, analysis. So 
the the this is a picture of one CCD. This is one three hours post CCD at the Angara experiment, and as you can see, um, this is one millimeter shadow scale, and this is the particle identification. So big signals all always correspond to alpha particles that put a lot of uh, of energy. This doesn't happen too often. So I have to search for this image just to find uh, alpha particles. Then we have some worms uh, signals that are the electrons. Then the very strike signals are the moons. Uh, we have a lot of uh, background because we are surface. We are not bother. And then we have these small heats. That is what we ha we call diffusion heats, and is a few pixels, one or two pixels maximum, and is the the signal that we are looking for. But doesn't mean that these are neutral interaction because very low. Uh, energy x-rays also will deposit the same amount of energy so this is why it's very difficult to read so the noise uh, this is the way where we read the ccd once we exposure the ccd we change the the potentials in the pixels just to move the charge so each pixel have uh, three subdivision let's say where for the exposure mode we have the potential of the two that are in the corners up, and we, we have a, a, the voltage in the middle low, so we accumulate the charge in the middle one. And then we want to move to the other pixels just to move the charge to the horizontal register. And once the charge is in the horizontal register, we will read the, the CCD device only one uh, sense node that is a very uh, low capacity, uh, have a very low capacitance. And this is why the CCD have very low threshold. So the idea is that just we move as this picture here, we move the charge just to move uh, from one part to the other and then to be able to read. And then for the reading of the charge in the sense node, we have a time window integration. And so the, the noise will depend on this uh, time uh, of integration of the charge. So it's very low. You are not counting all the charge, so it cannot be very low. And then if you spend so much time, then you, you have fluctuations in the noise. It also bothers your, uh, your noise. So we choose to work in the minimum of this response. And this is the, the for a cobalt source. This is the distribution of the, of the, of the charge in the pixels. Th those are the pictures with higher charge, some events. And this is the, the noise level that we have. CCDs have a linear response, so we calibrate our CCD with X-rays. Of course, the, the, the calibration occurs at uh, higher energy of the what we want to detect. It's very hard to, to calibrate at very low energy. So here we have some spectrum, here we have the peaks, and then we do the energy calibration. Uh, for the depth of, of the where the interaction occurs, we need to have the, the knowledge of the of the diffusion uh, evolution of the charge inside the CCD, and this will depend on the voltage, the characterization of how the CCD was built, and also the difference of potential that we will put. And this is not uh, the same CCD by CCD. So what we use, we profit of the fact that we are at the level, uh, sea level. So we use the muons, and for the muons we compute the the charge diffusion. So. This is a muon track, so this is a muon here is very near, coming from the top of the CCD, very near to the, the gates, and this is the opposite side. So what we do, we take the muon tracks and we uh, split in several parts. And split in several parts, we are able to see the width of the Gaussian of this uh, projection to the perpendicular, and then we have the, 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 um, we have the, oh, sorry. We have the, the, the sigma as a function of the depth. And this we define CCD by CCD, and with that we can convert from the event where uh, and the width of the event where this was happening inside the, the, the CCD. So here we can compare the data with the simulation. We can see that the agreement is very good. So we, we can control uh, where the interaction is happening. And with that, we are able to put this fiducial capsule rejects very low energy X-rays. 
So uh, the experiment is placed, this is the same map that uh, Esteban showed, is placed in the Angra reactor, power plant in the Angra Dois. This is uh, 160 kilometers from Rio, so it's near but not too near, it's four hours to go there. Uh, so this is the reactor uh, anti-neutrino spectrum that we have. So as you can see, we, we are a very low energy. Yesterday was a question about the, the energy of CONI and and coherent. So spallation source, uh, the, the, the new neutrino is uh, 30 MeV, while we are focused on less than 2 MeV. So we are much lower energy for the neutrinos than the spallation source. And then if we, uh, uh, we, we, we study the response of this flag in our CCDs, this is the, the rate of event that we expect as a function of the energy the uh, neutrino recoil, and then we have some uh, uh, selection efficiency. Uh, we cannot go, go to very low energy, so our detection of five sigmas of the, of the noise uh, start here. So this is the threshold of our detection up to now. Um, this is the picture of where the experiment is. This is the container. This container was already installed when we decided to put the experiment, thanks to the efforts to the a neutrino angra project that is what uh, um, Kemp was talking about is the, the water chain code detector with gadolinium that try to monitor the to understand the neutrino from the from the power plant so we are here in the other side of the container uh, we are at 30 meters of the core of the angra 2 and at uh, 200 meters of the angra 1 core angra contributes is only 1% of the of the neutrino and if one day we are able to see Angra 1, this is a very nice thing. Um, this is the picture of the detector. So the detector is placed inside this d that holds uh, our vacuum. Uh, the CCD works at the cryogenic temperature. We are operating at less than 10 100 uh, Kelvin. So here we have the, the board that connects the CCDs to the, uh, to the ADCs for the data taking and for to control the, the CCDs. Then we have a passive shielding that is uh, formed by uh, high uh, density uh, polyethylene. And we have two, two layers of 30 centimeters each. And then in the middle we have uh, 15 centimeters of uh, lead. Uh, the, the reason to have these two layers of uh, polyethylene is that the cosmic interacts in the lead and can generate neutrons, so we need to, to uh, uh, shield our detector from the neutron. Neutron can mimic uh, a neutrino signal. That's uh, the main thing, the main problem. Uh, this is where the box, the copper box, where the CCD is installed, the 14 that we have. And then we have this uh, 15 centimeters lead inside just to separate the electronics from the CCDs to avoid noise. Uh, this is a complete uh, view of the our size in the container. So here is the cryo cooler for the cryogenics, the pump, and then we have a relay system just to each time that we have to read the CCD, we need to hang all the all the experiment to the UPS just not to be plugged on on the power line because of no issues. So this is something that we learn when we debugging the, the experiment. It took us almost three years to have 100 uh, duty cycle in the experiment. So I will present very quick some result of the engineering run that shows, uh, allows us to understand how to operate the detector and show that we are able to do something uh, possible to detect the the, 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 the signal. So this analysis was done with only one gram of CCD and 15 days of a uh, reactor off and 15 days of reactor on. So this is was just a little sample of the all the data that we have. And this was because we had a lot of problems. So the first things that we discovered, the noise level at 2015 was good. And the first things that we discovered is that when we want to take data, the good data that is the reactor off, that is the data that will allow us to know our background. Uh, since in the power plant, all the containers were uh, built, they, they installed 15, 20 uh, containers around our containers just for maintenance, and they plug the, those containers from the same uh, 
outlet where we were plugging. Plug so we discovered that the noise wo get worse. So this is the best noise that we can have during the first reactor off, and this was something that we need to say, okay, what will we do with that and how we can avoid all these problems. So that's why uh, this engineer run was good, effort was need, and uh, we were not able to do more than 15 days. We had a lot of problems, but with that, even with that, we were able to do some data analysis. So this is the spectrum that we have at the detector. In blue is without no shielding, so before to start installing the shield, we have months of no shielding just to understand the, the background, and then we do a partial shield that is in pink, and then in red, we, we have the spec with the, the, the full shield. This has no selection cut. When we put selection cut, we can, uh, the, the rate, dear U is the way that we measure the rate, and uh, events per kilogram per day, per kilo electron volt. So we, we can get a little better uh, background. So the, those CCD have the problem. We have this all these X-rays. Um, one detector that is similar to what is in Angra is Snow Lab for dark matter. Unfortunately, you didn't have a talk last week. But it's, it's really the same detector. But in the snow lab, they don't have a ground. So in the snow lab, they were able to understand that this was the, 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 the X-ray coming from the uranium decay. And this uranium was in, in, in some of the part that was building the frame where to hold and to, to, to build to the, the, the electronics in the CCD. So for the new generation, we have to avoid this material and to change. So there's a, a synergy between the Connie experiment and the Damic experiment in this sense because are the exactly the same detector. So these are some uh, uh, controls that we do that is to use the um, copper fluorescent peak. We have uh, this uh, peak because the cosmic interacts in, the, in all the uh, co uh, copper that we have inside the CCDs. And then they, they, they do fluorescence, and we use this just for calibration. So we were studying the stability of this peak in, in for the calibration stability, and also the rate we study how this ray evolves, just to, to show that when we have the reactor on or the reactor off, this doesn't change. So this shows the, the performance of the detector. And also we were studying the, di the difference uh, between the time of the reactor on and reactor off for the uh, muons events. So performing uh, this strategy that is to do the reactor on rate means the reactor off rate and doing some selection cuts just to avoid the, 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 the events coming from the, the external uh, part of the CCD, we were able to build this spectrum here you have in blue is reactor on, in red is reactor off, and in black is the, f the, the difference. So it's compatible with zero. With one gram CCD and 15 days is what we wait. And then if we do a sum of the first beam, that is where we are more interested in the, in the energy range of the recoil, you can see that we don't have any excess. With this uh, first uh, um, uh, analysis, we were able to set an upper limit for the coherence scattering for uh, expected from the uh, standard model. And you can see that we are uh, a factor 500 uh, times. But this, as I say, is only small period, small uh, mass. But with that, was enough just to get more money for the new CCDs. Uh, we installed those CCDs. And this is a full pit of uh, CCD for three hours exposure. In the first years of the run, we are also we were able to improve a little our noise with using those CCDs. And this is very nice it's just to show. It's a, uh, look at here the position of the CCD. And we have a small shower going to the CCD. So it's very nice because this remembers me the emulsion plates and the way, uh, the way that the people at the 50s were trying to understand this cosmic ray. I came from cosmic means ray, so this is very nice. And also with these new CCDs, we were able to have action in the, in the uranium chain because we changed our packaging. And since those CCDs are wider, it's uh, 675 microns, and the other one, the first one, was only 250 microns. 
the muon peak was uh, displaced to higher energy, so this is also nice because here we can do some stability studies. And uh, this is, uh, uh, well, it's not anymore preliminary, <laughs> sorry, but uh, this is without any uh, extra cut, so it's raw data only. For that also we, we do all our performance uh, tests, as I showed before, so this is just to show this is the, the calibration constant for the uh, calf of the copper peak, and this is the event rate of the copper peak. You can see that there's no difference between reactor and off. This is a, a rate on in, in one period that go, uh, uh, one energy range that goes uh, between the silicon peak and the copper peak, that are the most important peaks that we have in the, in the spectrum. And this is for the mo this is for the moons, and you can see that it's very stable. Uh, this is just show how the experiment evolves. These are the three reactor off that we have. Oh, this year we have one, but the analysis of the data is some process. And you can see that this is the mass of the CCD. This is the time, the efficiency that we have during the reactor off, and this is the efficiency that we have during the reactor on. And it took almost three years to get to the 100%. So this year also we operate 100% duty cycle. And uh, here what we have is was uh, some kind of infrastructure problem that we resolved for the, two for the run in 2018. We don't have run in 2017 because the reactor stopped each one month, each uh, one month, each 14 months. So it's not too much date of reactor off. Uh, one thing that we have is that our uh, power line was connected to this external power line of the uh, nuclear plant that was has any maintenance because it's only for the service to the reactor. And we have one, more or less, one power energy cut every week, every 10 days. It's funny because we have the energy just nearby, but uh, this uh, power line comes from the, from the village. Uh, because of that, each time that we got a, a power cut, we need to heat our detector for security reasons because we cannot hold the vacuum forever. And if the, the cryogenesis is there and the, 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 the humidity and the CCD can break. So each time that we have a duty site, we have to spend five days to uh, be able to take data again. So the <laughs> dead time was almost 100%. We're discussing a lot with the power plant uh, team, and after a lot, lot of, of discussion, we uh, get a new power line, that this power line was installed at the end of 2017, and it's the same power line for the, uh, now for, the, for operating the, power, the nuclear power plant. So the stability is very good, and this was the main reason of the improvement of the experiment. So it was not our side our experimental site for that. Uh, the analysis for this new data from 2018 uh, is here. So here we have the efficiency as a function of the energy. So as you can see, we need to improve the efficiency at the lower energy. We have some limitation because of the noise of the CCDs. Uh, this analysis was done with uh, these values. is 1.6 kilogram per day reactor off and 2.1 kilogram per day reactor off on. In fact, we have more data on reactor on, but it doesn't make sense to put all there because which, uh, the data that dominates your uncertainty is given by the reactor off. And then one important thing is just to understand the, the quenching factor because uh, it, it is the... the, the, the um, the probability to, to have, if you have the recoil, to produce the ionization. And this quenching factor we were using up to, to this analysis, we were using the Linhal model that is an extension to the lowest energy because this was no measure for the silico detector. But then the uh, part of the collaboration of the DAMIC experiment that is the same for dark matter, they performed at the University of Chicago some measurements and they got a, a, a real measure that the, the, the sequential factor is lower, uh, so we, we have a very optimistic uh, expectation. So this, uh, uh, the rate of the neutrino using the, the last measure of the quenching factor uh, decreased a, a, a little. And this is important because um, when I will show the new results, now we are computing using this new, uh, this new 
quench in factor, and this is very important to understand that it's uh, defavorates a little the, the, the signal. So this is the energy spectrum as a function of the energy uh, for the reactor on in blue and reactor off in red. And here is the silicon peak, and these are the copper peak, alpha, and some beta. And this is the, the evolution. So we are uh, more or less 10 kilo DRU. While uh, uh, experiments for dark matter are few uh, DRU. So you can notice the difference and the uh, uh, disadvantage to operate at sea level. So this is the, ratio, uh, the difference between reactor on and reactor off. So it's compatible with no signal. Uh, if we put now the same limit that we put before and we compare with the two models because in the paper that in the analysis that I showed before it was using linear, you can see that we are now using not linear but using the new expectation for the new measure for the quench. We are at 40 of the standard model. So now we are a we need the statistics just to reduce the but the we improve a lot from one run to the other. The way also to improve this is to go to lower um, um, threshold detection. And for that, we need to have a better noise in our CCDs. So there's a new develop that is this skipper CCDs that the main uh, thing is just to uh, not destroy the charge when you are reading the charge in the sense nodes. They, 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 they move this charge to the sense node to perform the reading, to put back the charge and to move the charge again to the sense node to do another measure. And with that, you can do n times, as much time as you have to, to read this. And with that, you have a reduction of the noise that goes f uh, from the noise that you have from one reading as square uh, divided by the square root of the number of measurements that you did. So you can get a detector with no noise, almost no noise in the detector. So this is a normal CCD. This is the one that we are using in Konya, two electrons noise. And this is skip CCD where you can count electrons. Here you can see, and the, the noise is really, really low. So these CCDs is already been used for dark matter detection. There's a, a experiment running at minus the, uh, where in Fermilab. And the, the, the performance is very good. And we now we are planning to install those CCDs uh, in, the, in the CONI experiment. So just it's, it's amazing. It's just to show this is normal. We have an electron here. This is a normal CCD where we will never resolve this electron. And if you do a lot of measure, your, your noise reduces a lot. And you can see the electron. So also they are using this, uh, this, this uh, the CCDs also for, for doing some uh, quantum optics and taking uh, uh, photons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So on this uh, scale, which doesn't matter the number of electrons that you have, so we continue counting. Here we have 48, 49. If we go, sorry, if we go to the to the uh, iron 55 uh, spectrum, here is what you have, and if you do a sum of that, also we count the electrons in each. Uh, we count electrons. So this is how <laughs> linear is and how you rescale the noise with the number of measurements that you did. And also for Coney, if we do that, we will uh, be able to uh, go to a one order of magnitude low in, in threshold. And this will open the possibility of explore a uh, lower energy and the, the, the to look for non uh, inter no uh, standard interaction physics, uh, this uh, can happen. So also, I once we will detect the, the coherence scattering, this information we complement what was already detected by, by coherence because, first of all, it's low energy, it's more relevant for the, for the, the neutrino physics, but also is an anti-neutrino of the electron, and this was not measured yet. And then also, uh, this will allow us to build a huge size detector just to explore some uh, sterile neutrino physics. Um, just the summary, I, I have no more time. So CCDs can be used for particle detection. Uh, we are operating very stable in Angler, and now we have 100% UTCYC. 
the, for the moment, the strategy is to do the analysis by reactor on uh, minus reactor off. But we are also uh, starting to put some effort in trying to monitor, to characterize the, the background and to model it. So if we, we, are, we have a good model of our background, we need to, to have a uh, lot of uh, data of reactor off. Um, now we are four ti 40 times the standard model. We will, now we are taking data in a less uh, way where we are revealing uh, uh, in one direction in our CCD just to increase the, the signal to noise. So we expect to reduce that by a factor of four with the new, with the data of this year. We are working on that. And we start to work on the air and the, uh, all the detector developed to install skipper CCDs and we want to install for the next reactor off in 2020. So the installation will occur at the beginning of to, uh, next year. Uh, lowering this threshold will, will be really very good situation. Of course, also we are working in parallel to have and uh, to change a little the design and to have a huge mass detector uh, just to try to perform a, a look for new physics a, through the coherent scatter. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. I want to add two things. One is, you are interested in that. We are looking for more people to work on that. So contact me if you are interested in that. And also, next year, we will have the fourth uh, experimental physics, this is in Portuguese, school at, the, at my university, UFS.